Hey there, I am back with another deck review and today I'm going to be looking at the Kelly Gang playing cards from Australian based Alaseva Design Studios and designer Eric Siswanto. The Kelly Gang was a group of outlaws in Australia back in the late 1800s. It consisted of brothers Ned and Dan Kelly as well as their associates Joe Byrne and Steve Hart. And the four of them committed a lot of crimes, robberies, even killed a few police officers, but they also achieved folk hero status amongst Australians. Their resistance against authority kind of spoke to the individualistic spirit that a lot of Australians had. And so at the very least, they were divisive characters and had large pockets of support even until their death in 1880. Now, they were active, like I said, until 1880, when they were caught under siege in a hotel in Glenrowan, uh, Australia. Uh, they had attempted to ambush a train of police officers, and when that failed, they were caught up in this hotel. Ultimately, Dan Kelly, as well as Joe Byrne and Steve Hart, were killed in the siege. Ned surrendered after being injured and was ultimately hanged for his many crimes. That's the story of the gang, but let's jump into the deck and we'll find out more as we go along. Now, starting with the tuck case, it is a really simple, clean design, a matte finish, a navy blue tuck uh, with hits of gold foil as accents throughout. Main image is gonna be this large portrait of Ned Kelly here in the center. I can see him with that glorious beard going on. Uh, you've got the dates of his life below, 1854 to 1880, so he was only 26, 27 when he died. And then it says limited edition in gold foil at the top. This is an edition of 1,000 decks in total. And then you've got the Kelly Gang playing cards and sort of this Victorian style underneath with scroll work in gold foil to give it some extra accents. Uh, as you turn to the sides, you just got playing cards on one side and on the other with a gold foil band. Bottom has your ad copy for Aliceva. And the tops just says, such is life. Uh, that was supposedly the last words uttered by Ned Kelly as he was led to his hanging. Uh, the back here is going to be the back design of the cards, but done up with gold foil throughout. And you have a custom tuck seal here with a pair of revolvers. The revolvers were uh, Ned's weapon of choice. On the inner flap, we just have little extra tiny hits of gold foil. And you have some interior tuck printing as well. Uh, it says the Kelly Gang there, has a little bit of an extra scroll there. And then a repeated pattern of revolvers going down the interior of the tuck. That's the tuck case. Let's get into the cards and we'll start with the back design. I really like the back design of these cards quite a bit. Uh, it's a navy blue uh, back with bits of kind of copper colored ink as well as white ink. You've got the pair of revolvers here, the banner with such is life, Ned's last words written on it. And then you have this sort of pattern of lines extruding out from the star in the center. Little bits of orange scroll work going through there as well as forming a border around the cards kind of finishes it out. And then you have kind of a thicker navy blue poker border around the edge. So really nice, really clean two-way back design. I uh, like the uh, look of this one quite a bit. Now flipping over to extra cards. You get this one, which is a double backer. You also get a couple of extra ad cards. One of them uh, just says the Kelly Gang at the top and features a famous portrait of Ned. This is actually the one that was uh, that the uh, portrait on the front of the tuck case was based on. Uh, this is actually an image from believe, the day before uh, he was executed uh, in Australia. And then you get another card which tells you a little bit about the story of the deck, tells you a little bit about the Kelly Gang uh, right there. And then a pair of jokers. Uh, so this one over here, the black joker features Ned Kelly. And you can see him here wearing this really bizarre helmet. This is actually what he was wearing uh, during the siege in Glenrow. And so they had uh, pulled up some plows and formed their own armor out of those plows. And so including these really bizarre helmets here. So it looks a little bit like a knight's helmet. Uh, that was, uh, 
You can actually see that armor still on display in museums in Australia today. So there's Ned Kelly with his revolver and his bizarre uh, homemade helmet there. There's Joker in the corners, Kelly Gang at the top. The other one is an image of Ellen Kelly. Uh, this is Ned and Dan's mother. Uh, she actually was in prison at the time of the siege uh, and was kind of a remarkable woman who actually outlived the majority of her, uh, of her kids and was a big influence in Ned and Dan's life. So she is featured on the red Joker, again, the Kelly gang at the top and Joker in the corners. There's your two Jokers. Now we'll get into the deck. Now the four members of the Kelly gang are all gonna be featured on the aces. Uh, so you kind of get like a fourth court card in each suit uh, because the aces are done up in this sort of court card style, but featuring the famous members of the Kelly gang. So the ace of spades is of course gonna be the leader, Ned Kelly. You've got him there, that same look from the front of the tuck case, but now you've got him there holding his revolvers, again, his weapon of choice as Ned Kelly in the two corners, and then the ace and spade Pippin index in the corners. A really simple, clean, monochromatic line drawing done on this one. I like the style of this uh, quite a bit personally. I think it's a really cool style. Uh, as you go through the number cards, they're gonna be fairly standard, slightly custom pips. And then of course you have a custom pip and index in the corner as well. But the layout's gonna be pretty familiar. Uh, the, the spades here are done in a really dark navy blue as opposed to a true black. Uh, but otherwise, pretty standard, normal uh, number cards. And then you get a set of custom courts as well. They're done in the same art style as those aces, but they do feature the more classic uh, court characters that you're used to. Uh, just obviously fairly customized. Uh, so both familiar and customized. I think with these, I'm a little bit distracted by how relatively small their heads look compared to their bodies. They feel like they have really small heads on these, but uh, they're still very interesting, nice court cards uh, in this monochrome style as well. Uh, turning to the diamonds, now we've got uh, Ned's brother, Dan, who favored the rifle here. You can see the K, I'm guessing that's for Kelly there on the, uh, on the rifle. And so you've got Dan featured there. And then the diamonds, all the number cards, pretty standard. And then into the three court cards. And you can really see the tiny head on the king of diamonds there. Here's the uh, ace of clubs for Joe Byrne. Uh, he has a pen and quill in his hand. That was, uh, I guess you would call it his weapon of choice. He actually wrote a lot of articles and things like that. Uh, which were a large part of what created this sympathetic support for the group amongst the public. Uh, so he kind of had a propaganda role in the group. There's Joe featured on the Ace of Clubs and then through the number cards and into the courts. Really interesting that the Jack of Clubs is holding a mallet there. That's something that I've never really seen before. And the King of Clubs is actually the suicidal king on this one. You can see him with the king the king with the sword through the head there. And then last but not least is the Ace of Hearts, Steve Hart, uh, holding a kind of curled up whip there as his weapon. And then down through the number of cards, really interesting shape to the hearts here with this sort of elongated and curved style to the hearts. And finishing with the three quarts, and there they are. So that is the deck. Uh, these are printed by Noir uh, playing cards. They're not really known for their handling on their cards. And I would say, you know, it kind of holds up to that. Uh, you know, they, they feel nice if you want to use these for gameplay. They'll, they'll dribble pretty well. But in fans, they're definitely kind of clumpy, a little bit hard to fan. And I'm not the best at fans by any means, but uh, these are absolutely a lot clumpier than most of them. That said, uh, what would I use the deck for? It's not really a cardistry deck for sure. Uh, you could use it for kind of an interesting twist on game night for sure. It's definitely a readable, easy to use deck for that. And for me though, it's really just a fun deck for the history and the art. Uh, it's fun to kind of pour over uh, 
use it as kind of inspiration to look up a little bit about the story of the Kelly Gang. Certainly that's how I used it. Uh, it's not going to be a great deck for magic either. Uh, definitely a lot going on and then having that different uh, edge for the faces and the backs kind of limits down a lot of the tricks that you can do. Uh, so that's it. That is the look at the Kelly Gang playing cards. Interesting look at history through this one. So hope you enjoyed that one. Let me know what other decks you want to see. Subscribe for more deck reviews and unboxings, and I'll see you for the next one.